What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new build of Android 12 for the Raspberry Pi 4. And I've actually been using this for the past few days. I can honestly say that this is the best performing version of Android that I've ever tested on the Raspberry Pi 4. Now what I have here is an 8GB Raspberry Pi 4, but the developer just recommends a 2 or a 4. You can go with the 8 if you want to, it will work. This will also work on the Raspberry Pi 400 or the CM4. When it comes to overclocking the CPU, you can do it very easily from within Android, and I'm set to 2000 MHz. This is coming to us from an awesome developer who goes by the name Constakang, and we've taken a look at some of his other previous Android builds for the Raspberry Pi 4, but this one is based on Lineage OS 19.0, so we do have Android 12. I'm going to leave a link to his website in the description, but uh, real quick, I wanted to show you what's working and what's not. So we've got HDMI, the 3.5mm audio jack, USB microphones, Bluetooth speakers, headphones, etc. You can also add an audio DAC over GPIO, Bluetooth and Bluetooth tethering is working, GPIO, GPS with an external USB module, Ethernet, hardware accelerated graphics. We have V3D, OpenGL, and Vulkan with this build. HDMI SEC, and so on and so on. Another important feature here would be a touchscreen over USB. I've tested it out with one of my portable monitors, and it does work really well. What's not working, still with Android on the Raspberry Pi 4, is hardware video decoding. So unfortunately, when it comes to decoding and encoding video, it will rely on software. But when it comes to gaming and emulation, we do have access to that V3D, OpenGL, and Vulkan. I will be doing a full tutorial very soon on the channel, and uh, one of the reasons I'm holding off is because we don't have an official version of GAPS 12 yet. And when it comes down to it, you could always sideload a third-party version of GAPS, but I'm going to wait till the official version of GAPS 12 is released to do a full video just to show you how to install this and get Google Play up and running. But if you want to go ahead and try it out right now without Google Play installed, all you really need to do is download the latest image from his website and flash it to a micro SD card. So I've got it set up on my Raspberry Pi right now. As you can see, Lineage OS 19. We have Android 12. And everything that I've been testing has worked out really well, except for Google Play. I did sideload an older version of GAPS, but it won't work with Android 12. I also reflashed the whole SD card and sideloaded a third-party version of GAPS. And it just and it actually worked out for the first day, but then I kind of got stuck loading into Google Play. It just won't load anymore, so I'd have to wipe the whole card and reflash it. I'm not going to worry about it until the official version of GAPS 12 is out. That way, everybody can get this up and running without an issue. Personally, I really love these builds of Android from Constakang because we do have working Wi-Fi, working Bluetooth. We can connect Bluetooth controllers, Bluetooth speakers. But from the settings menu, we have a dedicated Raspberry Pi 4 option. And from here, we can actually disable and enable I2C. We can enable the GPIO and we can overclock the CPU from 1.5 up to 2 gigahertz. And then all we really need to do is reboot the unit and we're overclocked. We don't have to worry about plugging our micro SD card into another PC or anything like that. And since I can't get Google Play working properly with this build just yet, I did sideload a third party market called Aptoid. There's tons of applications and games that I can download and use right now, but you're still gonna run into some games that you download that require Google services and you just can't launch those games. For instance, Minecraft. I have purchased it with my Google account, but since I don't have my Google account signed in here, it's just not going to let me start the game unless I sideloaded a mod APK, which I'm not going to do right now. I'm just going to wait it out. But I got to say, I am impressed with the gaming and emulation performance of this build since we have access to OpenGL and Vulkan with certain emulators so we can swap over. But the first thing I wanted to test were a few native Android games, and then we're going to jump into a little bit of emulation. First on the list, on the Android side of things, we've got Real Racing 3. I can tell you right now that this is performing better than the S905X3 boxes that I've tested on my channel. I get a lot of choppiness with those boxes, but with this build of Android on the Raspberry Pi 4 overclocked to 2 GHz, it's really, really smooth and totally playable. Personally, I can't wait to get Google Play up and running because there's a lot of games that I've purchased over the years that I'd like to test here. Now, this isn't going to run something like Genshin Impact. It's probably not even going to run something like PUBG but there are still thousands and thousands of games that we can play on the Raspberry Pi 4. Moving over to something a little lower end, we have Among Us. This was just something that I could install and not have to have Google services installed to use. 
Unfortunately, this doesn't work with a controller, so you will be stuck with, you know, on-screen controls. It's not something I would recommend playing with a mouse, but as you can see, it is fully functional. Moving over to Stardew Valley, this game does natively support controllers, so I've got an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth to the Raspberry Pi 4. And again, just like Among Us, this game is fully playable. It's not the hardest game to run, but it's super fun and great to see it up and running on the Pi 4. Moving over to some emulation, first up we have some Dreamcast using ReDream, and when it comes to ReDream on the Pi 4, whether you're running something like Recall Box or Retro Pi, it does work out pretty well. And right here we've got Sonic Adventure 2 running at full speed. FPS is up in the top right hand corner, and again I do have that controller connected over Bluetooth. But yeah, we're getting some great Dreamcast performance. I do want to test one more right after this, just to make sure one of my favorite games does run on this build. Seeing how well Sonic Adventure 2 ran, I was pretty sure that we'd have a good time with Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Every once in a while when there's lots of particles on screen, I do notice a couple dips, but overall performance is really great with this one also. Another system that's performing really well with this build is N64. I'm using Mupin 64 plus FZ. I also tried Mupin 64A. We're getting about the same performance, but I just swapped back over to FZ because this is kind of my go-to for Android. And here's Diddy Kong Racing running really, really well. I didn't do any upscaling or anything like that, but with the way it's running, I think we could go up to about 800 by 600. Now, Diddy Kong is an easier one to emulate, so I wanted to throw something a bit harder at it and I went with GoldenEye 007, and to my surprise, we're getting amazing performance with this game here. So I've actually seen this game performing this well on a Raspberry Pi 4 in the past with a couple tweaks here and there, but with this, I didn't have to do any tweaks at all. I just started up the emulator, loaded the game, and started playing here. We probably could get a bit better out of it because there are some dips here and there, but it's really impressive to see this running so well. Now it's time to check out some PSP emulation using the standalone version of PPSSPP. We've got Ratchet and Clank running here at full speed. This natively ran at 30 FPS. It is up in the top right hand corner and we're at 2x resolution with this specific game. If you do notice some dips, you could drop it down to one, but I think performance is good enough for 2x. And by the way, I'm using the Vulcan back end here on the Pi 4. So I tested a bunch of easier to run PSP games, I was even able to get Family Guy up to 4x on this, but I wanted to move over to something a little harder and here we have God of War Chains of Olympus. As you can see, we're not quite at full speed, but I gotta say this is really trying its hardest with that Vulcan back end. I also swapped over to OpenGL and I was getting a little worse performance, so Vulcan is where it's at, but I'd say the best way to play this one here is to turn frame skip to 1, that way we're gonna run at 30 FPS. Well, it should be running at 30, we still get some dips. Either way you look at it, this is a harder game to emulate, especially on the Raspberry Pi 4, and this little thing is trucking along with Android 12. So overall, I think we're getting some really great performance out of this new Android 12 build for the Raspberry Pi 4. And keep in mind, I am overclocked to 2000 megahertz on that CPU, so you definitely might want to set it there. And even though I'm using the 8 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4, we never really reached even 4 gigabytes of usage, so the 4 gigabyte model will perform just as well. If you're interested in trying this out right now, all you need to do is head over to the Constacang website, link for that is in the description, flash to a micro SD card, plug it into the Pi, and boot it up. I will do a full tutorial and show you how to install Google Play as soon as we get GAPS 12, but right now, as I'm making this video, we don't have an Android 12 Open GAPS version, and that's the one you really want to use. But you can always install a third-party app market just to test a few things out, and uh, I do think it's worth a shot. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on Android 12 using the Raspberry Pi 4, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.